So wow. they were here, and we had some of our students out on the, the credenza behind us. We have a picture of one of our clients, and he's that was taken at White Cane Day, mm -hmm. and he's reading mm -hmm. some Braille, and he was he went right and, and read one of the pages in the Bible, and this was very edifying for the production workers who never really actually saw a blind person reading what they produced here in Myrtle Beach in Braille was wonderful, oh, heartwarming no. as could be. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. probably do this as a yearly event. Our White Cane Safety Day. The really, the goal of it is to educate the motorists to be um, more respectful if they see a person trying to cross the street with a white cane. Mm -hmm. So we had about 20 people with white cane um, cross here from our office and go right across the street to City Hall. Oh, it was magnificent, you know, and the police held back traffic a little bit. Right. It was kind of like a, a 60s event, you know, to yeah. raise awareness sure. of a minority group walking the street with the canes. So the whole thing was to educate the community, and that's really what we're all about here, too. Absolutely, that's Dorothy. That's a funny event. That's fabulous. Well, I'm sure glad, and, and hopefully this is something you'll do in the PD, I as well as at the beach, particularly with the Lutheran Church, that connection there and their commitment to to uh, persons that are you know, you, you think visually impaired. We're such a, a tourist destination here, but yet the, the people, when you get to live here for a few years and get to know the community and the individuals, we're really a small town. It sure is, even though you're over a very large, uh, uh -huh. the Coastal Regional Outreach Center, and of course the Florence office, you're, you're spending a lot of time in the PD area as well, Dorothy. Yes, yes, we have child, uh, the early intervention services there too. We have a specialist on deaf blindness for the state. Uh -huh. and she works with both uh, little ones who are deaf and blind. So we have a head count, we offer services for them. And we have um, a gentleman, Marty McKenzie, you met him before. Right, of course, sure. Marty now is a contractor for the Department of Education, and he is their, their expert on dealing with um, children who are blind in public schools, too, as well as mm. working for us. That's tremendous. So we there. have um, similar things that go on in that office. You've too. kept great connections throughout the state, and of course, uh, I'm sure you all are learning from each other on a regular basis. As we think about for parents whose mm -hmm. children are either born visually impaired or hearing impaired, or it uh, surely strikes them at an early age. What are some of the, for yourself and your involvement, uh, this is a, a number of years, Dorothy, mm -hmm. seeing this, are there some ways that, to, that parents can deal with that if they're not visually or hearing yeah. impaired at an early age? Do you mean, um, in, with sign language now is one thing that we're, we're knowing, that there is research that indicates that uh, sign language can help all youngsters improve their literacy. So that's what I mentioned before we teach tiny fingers, and that's what that is. It's basic sign. Well, you're not signing everything like we do with deaf kids, right. but a key important word, like if we're talking about animals or milk or food or bathroom. We had one grandmother tell me um, that they were able to toilet train their youngster very early because, you see, you can form a sign before you can form a, word, a spoken word. So they started using the sign for bathroom. Is that right odd? away? Do you have to go to the bathroom? Do you have to go to the bathroom? And as soon as the youngster indicated that they needed to go, right. the parent would take them where they needed to be. And before you know it, the youngster started going <laughs> oh before my. they could say the word. And like at 16. That was someone around here? Yes, yes. That's so tremendous. There's lots of success stories. And that's one thing we're going to be doing coming up in the future uh, in September. We're going into a partnership with Ori Georgetown. Technical College, and we're bringing in a nationally renowned expert on the use of sign language with hearing children to enhance their literacy. So that's going to be a day-long workshop right here. And if, if viewers are interested in that, they can call me here about that. And we're right now uh, finalizing the details. Okay. But we hope to have 250 people at that program. Is that right? Great. And then offering credits for child care workers and uh, or in any kind of a um, childhood center. It would be for parents, it would be for professionals in early right. childhood education. I think you have a date already set for that. Yes, it's Friday, September 26th. Friday, 926, Friday, September 26th. Okay, mm -hmm. well folks can go ahead and get that down on their calendar. Right, yeah, it'll be a day-long event with lunch provided by the Ori, uh, Georgetown Tech students, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice partnership. Absolutely. One of the other things we wanted to talk about, Dorothy, is we think about hurricane evacuation planning oh, and yes. issues for, uh, for oh. a multitude of uh, people that you all deal with. Yeah, our uh, Outreach Center has been very active working with the local DHEC, local Red Cross, and we're setting up a specialized center here, here in Horry County for people who are deaf or blind, 
and we're going to have specialized equipment. Oh, great. And that's what I have here to show you. At one of our centers that will be specialized, we will, as one of our offerings of our school through the Te South Carolina Telecommunications Distribution Program, right. we have uh, telephones like this is called the CapTel. Now, let's say you're someone who yeah, no, has... I can hold that up as you uh, talk about it, okay, Dorothy. Look, sure, the, I this think This is uh, very new technology. Let's say that you have lost your hearing, but you still retain your speech. Right. So you could speak on the phone, but you can't hear. This is captioning. So you can read the telephone message and still respond by voice. That's called the CapTel. This piece of equipment, while we're putting one in the emergency shelter, is also free to anyone who qualifies in the state of South Carolina. It's called CapTel. Mm -hmm. The other phone that we have yeah, sure, absolutely. is for a person who might uh, mm -hmm. be blind. See which, uh, is, it has Braille yeah. on it. Uh, so the numbers are large and they're bl uh, white on black for high contrast for a person who has low vision and also brailled. Okay, so this would be for a person who is blind but it might be losing their hearing. Right, oh boy. Yes, mm. that would need mm. an amplified phone with large numbers. That's free also. And of course, our standard, t these are called TTYs, or telecommunications devices. I remember it when we were here filming a few years ago at your other uh, Conway location, formerly. And it, at this location, too, we have samples of all these phones here that viewers could stop by and see uh, what they look like. And we can give them one of the applications to fill out to get this free telephone. All Those are provided free. Yes, throughout the state. Te, uh, through our South Carolina Telecommunications uh, Distribution Program that is monitored and over, uh, under the overseeing uh, of our school. And all you need to be is a resident of South Carolina, right. have a land phone line or ground line in your home, and have a sign off by perhaps an audiologist or your family doctor that you could benefit from. And this is free to anyone in the state. It's That's a tremendous, program, Dorothy. And we have all the information you'd like to know about. Well, have a lot of programs that folks probably don't know about it, why it's so important to call right. or uh, anyone to call the office, the 843-248-8100 number. Right. And, of course, the, for folks who are not here in the area, mm -hmm. if they are throughout the state, each of the outreach centers are yes. in a position to interface mm -hmm. much in the same way. And, uh, of course, the school has an 800 number. Okay. And on our website, I would, ex you know, expect that they would go to the uh, website. Sure, you to, want to give us uh, that, uh, that, yes, that address? Yes, it's www.scsdb.org. SCSDB.org. Right. Oh, boy, we should be promoting that throughout. www.scsdb. Right. South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind. Org. That org, right. Okay, great. So, and that's a little bit about the telecommunications piece of what we do. It's very important, you know, in this age and age and time when communications are so critical. Dorothy, normally we'd open the interview talking about your background, but I, just for oh. viewers, uh, this has been a, a love of yours for many, many years. Yeah. A long time. What prompted your original? Or was this uh, someone in your family who was either visually or hearing impaired? Uh, yeah. Something that prompted, or yourself even? Any concerns that uh, at an early age, oftentimes parents may have uh, some issues that prompt their their great interest. Well, actually, um, I my background is teaching the deaf, mm -hmm. so um, I retired to South Carolina after a career at a, a in Pennsylvania at a school for the deaf. Is that right? Where I was a teacher, and then I was a guidance counselor, and finally I retired as the administrator of the school. But in that job, it was a small school, so I had to do a lot of different kinds of jobs. Right. Like working with the media and grant writing and things, so it prepared me very well for this position. To retire. To retire yeah. and, yeah, yeah, come yeah. To and come Carolina to South Carolina. And, yes. um, and meet and work with the people who are deaf in this state. And you know one of the greatest things that happened when I came here? I met one of my former students who also relocated, who no. I taught 30 years ago, and he lives in Myrtle Beach. Is that right? Such a small world. That's tremendous, Dorothy. That's mm -hmm. tremendous. The, the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind, their main facility there in Spartanburg, folks, mm -hmm. they encourage folks to come up as well oh, and sure. take tours. That is uh, one that of the kind. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus. It's got a school for the deaf, a school for the blind, a school for students with multiple challenges, a post-secondary program, and also a therapeutic horseback riding. Exactly. On many acres, mm -hmm. there are beautiful animals right there for our students and for community students who could benefit by such a program, the shelter program. So it's really, it's a one-stop place 
for any kind of educational needs of people who are deaf or blind. It's worthy folks taking the trip to Spartanburg to see the facility and oh. have a, a greater understanding of what uh, persons around them are potentially going through. You know, by all means. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a decision that parents make with their home school district to, to use the facility on campus. Right. And, uh, and certainly that is a parent right issue. But certainly it would behoove all parents of all kids who are deaf or blind to see the offering that what a, a residential school. And you know, you might see our buses, our, our students from Myrtle Beach area go back and forth every weekend. They don't stay there all week. They Is come that right? They have weekends with the parents. Every weekend. Every I weekend they're on that. buses. Mm, yeah. mm. Just this past, uh, it, literally for another week, but it was celebrated at the Horry County Museum during the month of March, but I believe it's mid-March to mid-April, yes, Deaf uh, History that's, that's Observation mm -hmm. Month. And uh, what's been the principal focus there? We've got less than a minute, Dorothy. I'm um, sorry we've run out of time. Well, but the uh, we sure want to get you back. But it, but as it relates to just share with viewers what they would have seen had they visited mm -hmm. the Horry County Museum during the month of March. Well, you know, deafness is a culture. It's, it's a subculture. And as part of any culture is a history. And deaf people have a history. From the, in this country, from the very first school for the deaf in 1817, that's when our real history mm. started here in deaf education with Gallaudets. And they started the first school, and our school in Spartanburg was founded in 1849, so mm. we've been here a long time too. So it focused on the struggles, the events, the progress of the deaf community in, in America uh, from that time about in the early 1800s to the present. That's tremendous. Well, it's important to just to know of the recognizing the month and obviously all the efforts you all do. And hopefully, folks will continue to pop in and see this tremendous facility I right here so. at 212 Main Street in Conway. I Dorothy, hope. thanks so much for being with us You're this welcome, morning. You're welcome, Greg. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Dorothy Bambach, the director of the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blinds Coastal Regional Outreach Center. Coming up next. 843-248-8100. Take the time to write that number down, 843-248-8100. Whether, whether you're living here, living in the PD, of course, the, uh, the tremendous opportunity to learn more about the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind, www.scsdv.org, a great website, a ton of information. The events, the fourth annual golf tournament to benefit the Coastal Regional Outreach Center. It's Saturday, June 14th, out of Beachwood Golf Course, 9 a.m., Shotgun Star, get out there, take the time to learn more. Give them a call, 843-248-8100. Dorothy Bambach, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Absolutely.